Lake Orion's huge end of summer blowout, the Dragon of the Lake Festival, returned after taking a year off. We'll look back at all the fun and bring you the results of the Dragon Boat races. The Woodward Dream Cruise also returned after a brief hiatus. Our own TV camera was there for the official kickoff in Ferndale and a brand new event in Pontiac. Galling Buick GMC held yet another charity car cruise, this time benefiting Miracle League Field at Friendship Park. And the Lake Orion Dragons varsity football season is officially underway. We'll have highlights from the home opener against the Utica Eisenhower Eagles. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Lake Orion's annual Dragon in the Lake Festival was created in 2009 by the Orion Art Center to celebrate its 30th anniversary. Over the next decade, it became the community's biggest celebration of the summer. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the cancellation of the event, and the Art Center hosted the low-key Crafty Dragon event instead. One year later, Dragon in the Lake returned to the village, and residents once again had reason to celebrate. <laughs> Dragon on the Lake 2021 officially opened to the public on Thursday, August 26th and continued through Sunday, August 29th. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as dozens of vendors lined up along Broadway and Flint Streets. Visitors were able to shop for art, jewelry, clothing and more while enjoying food, refreshments and entertainment. There were plenty of activities for the little ones, including arts and crafts, inflatables, and even a magic show. Artists also got to work on their entries for the Chalk Art Challenge, which has its roots in the very first Dragon on the Lake Festival. Participants were assigned a space along Front Street to create their works of art, which could be judged and considered for cash prizes. For the first time, the Orient Art Center partnered up with 360 Event Productions to organize the event, which is the Art Center's largest fundraiser of the year. You know, we are really, really excited and thankful that every, a lot of people from the community did come out to support the Orient Art Center. And you're right, things were very different this year. Uh, obviously, we're still battling COVID um, and we took last year off, so our rhythm might be a little off. But I have to say that the people that I talked to and the events I participated in were really exciting and we had a great time. The Art Center had a presence on Broadway Street where they offered demonstrations and promoted the classes they offered throughout the year. Oh, we hope that we let people know that we're here. There is an Art Center in Lake Orion. It's amazing the people that don't know that, so that's part of what we're doing here. Um, and we definitely need some financial help. Um, but we have a great pottery studio where people can come and go 24-7 and work. It's great to be involved in the community. That's what art is all about here. We're trying to bring the community some art and art to the community. So yes, it's great to be back. Fitting right in with the festival's art theme was Johnny Martinez Jr. who sculpted this spectacular sand dragon on Flint Street over the course of several days. The sand, it always starts with good quality sand and we have it trucked in from a little quarry near my home in Birch Run. So uh, we had it brought up here in a truck, they dumped it out for us and we went to town. We just started walking on it, pushing it, shoving it, working it as with our muscles, nice big pushing and shoving uh, to get it to kind of look like a uh, dragon. The next day we come back with tools similar to this and we, uh, we take a little bit more away and it looks a little bit more like a dragon. Today I have the smaller tools that I'm working on with the detail and uh, by the end of the day it should be pretty, co pretty close to a dragon. By 8 o'clock tonight, which is in about an hour, we'll have 42 hours in between myself and another artist. So uh, it's quite a few man hours but um, a lot of it is spent gabbing and talking and doing interviews, stuff like that. <laughs> Visitors enjoyed music and refreshments at the Tiki Bar on Anderson Street all weekend long, and live bands performed in the Dragon Pub as well. On Saturday, the always popular Square Pegs entertained the crowd with the biggest hits from the 80s. You know, I can't even tell you how good it feels. We took a little more than a year. It was more like 18 months for the Square Pegs, so to be back and to be doing what we love and, you know, to be back together is so special for us and we're so happy. You can expect a super high energy, fun 80s dance party. We got your favorite 80s hits. Pretty much run the gamut on your favorite 80s tunes and it's super high energy. Like I said, you better be dancing all night. <laughs> you think this Lake Orion community needs this right now? 
I think every community needs this right now. I think live music is so healing and it brings us together in a way that other things just can't. On the morning of Sunday, August 29th, teams of paddlers gathered in Greens Park on the shore of Lake Orion for the return of the Dragon Boat Races. Participation was down in 2021, but eight teams set up camp in the park with the goal of claiming the coveted Dragon Cup trophy. The Tyco drummers performed during the opening ceremony at 9.30 a.m. Then organizers Rob Cavanaugh and Matt Gibb welcomed participants and went over the rules. By 9.45, the first boats were boarded and headed out to the started line. In the first race of the day, it was the Bay City Rowers in lane one, Heron Springs in lane two, and Dragon Down Parkinson's in lane three. With a time of 119.67, Team DDP claimed the first victory of the day. Um, we're Dragon Down Parkinson's. We use this festival every year as a way to raise funds and awareness for the Michigan Parkinson's community. Um, we race for our nonprofit, the Maryland Jane Foundation. So all the proceeds directly benefit Michigan residents. How do you guys feel? You just won the first heat. Adrenaline. We're loving this. This is what we look forward to. And anytime we can come out on top, we're happy. In the second race of the first heat, Team Shark Attack barely edged out JS Filthy Oars by less than a second. Well, we started in 2019, and um, last year we had a team ready, but then it didn't happen. So we were watching it, and as soon as it was announced, we were like, oh, we're totally in. So we had to change over a few teammates this year because a lot of parents had to take kids to college. But we got met a lot of new friends and got a combo of ladies from Orion and Oxford on the team. And we got a new drummer this year who's amazing. And we're excited to be an all-female team. And in race three, it was the defending champs, the Bernie Directive, who destroyed the competition, defeating their opponents with a time of 115.30, more than 10 seconds faster than the other teams. Okay, so how does it feel? Uh, tiring. It's been a long uh, year and a half, but um, I mean, it's, you know, the first race is always the hardest because you have new people, some new people, some people have done it years prior and just getting back into it. I mean, we all took a year off last year, obviously, and everyone's so busy we couldn't get a practice in, so this was really kind of our practice first race. So Possibly, you think, a three-peat? Oh, I hope so. I mean, we're very competitive, so uh, we came to win. Um, I mean... We want to have fun too, but you know it's fun? Winning. So we're going to do our best. Um, that's all we can ask for. Uh, hopefully everyone is, uh, we're all a couple years older, so it takes a toll a little bit more. But I think we're in good shape. Um, really good competition this year for the first few races, so we'll see what happens. In the first race of the second heat, Team Huron Springs improved their time over their first attempt by seven seconds, defeating Team DDP. Well, this is our third year sponsoring it. Uh, Jeff's boat uh, was asking for a sponsorship three years ago. We were glad to hop on board and support this team. And this year is a special tribute to Anna Scripps, who uh, we lost last year, or actually the beginning of this year, to cancer. Sorry to hear that. She raced in 2019 and rode, and um, even though she was in pain, she rode anyways. And come to find out, the cancer came back, and. Um, she passed away in January, but we're attributing her life um, to be an awesome um, example of perseverance. Okay. One, two, three. Don't, Don't rock the boat. Don't, Don't tip, tip the boat over. over. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. In race two of the second heat, the Bay City Rowers also improved in their first attempt and crossed the finish line first with a time of 119.84. We're a little nervous, but we need we need to have fun again. We need to do it safe, but still have fun. And everyone it brings everyone out of their house, and we're having a good time. How did you guys manage to pull off a win? The win? Um, we just did as hard as we could, and we just did our chant. And we just want to get something positive this year, and we want to win. <laughs> All right, we'll show you our chant. <laughs> Bay City, Bay City, Bay City. 
And in the third race of the second heat, the Bernie Directive showed remarkable consistency, finishing with a time of 115.34, almost identical to their first attempt. When the times were tabulated, it was announced that the Bernie Directive would attempt to defend their title against Team DDP and the Bay City Rowers in the third race of the final heat. Here's how it played out. And Bernie Directive is sound as always, a bit out of cadence, but man, they are strong. Yeah, and it uh, unofficially appears that they, they have commanded a lead, but nothing is over until it's over. It is not over until it's over. That truer words have never been spoken, but I got to tell you what, it yeah. sure looks like it's really over. Yeah, and, and it looks like looks like Bernie directed. It looks like we could have another have another notch in the championship belt for the Bernie directive. Wow. Strength. Oh yeah, feeling the burn once again. Congratulations to the Bernie Directive who won their third Dragon Boat race in a row and their fourth win in five attempts. It's a great win. Uh, it's, I'm sad that I didn't, there's not more boats, but you know what? Um, I get it. There's a lot of things going on in the world, but uh, congratulations to everybody that participated today, uh, especially my team and everyone that takes a lot of time to do this. A full day of dedication, uh, but it's for a great cause. Love our community. Um, and this is just one more cool thing that we have in our community, but hey, I'm happy to take the trophy home. It stays in Lake Orion, uh, so we'll, we'll treat Edwin with uh, respect and honor. Dragon in the Lake 2021 came to a close on Sunday with an award ceremony at the Dragon Pub. There, the Orient Art Center named the winners of the Talk Art Challenge. Awards were also handed out to the best drummer of the Dragon Boat Races, as well as best costume, which went to the Bay City Rowers, and most team spirit, which went to Team Shark Attack. The bronze medal went to Team Dragon Down Parkinson's for finishing in third place. The silver medal went to the Bay City Rowers for second place, and claiming the gold and the coveted Dragon Cup trophy was the Bernie Directive. It is the Stanley Cup of Dragon Boat Racing. Take good care of that, baby. Now let's hand out some gold. Our motto was persevere. Persevere and uh, really just keep the tradition alive, keep it going. We know people are uh, treating the, the pandemic differently, and uh, you know we are just glad and blessed that we had uh, and eight teams out here today paddling, giving it their best, the and so much kudos to the, the paddlers that came out today. We're looking for next year to be even bigger and better. It's really inspired us to already start planning for next year. But here's a great thing. So we had built the festival and the Dragon Boat races up to well over 20 teams and 20 boats, and this park was packed elbow to elbow. And you watch next year, we'll be back there. It's uh, We're going to double the size of it next year. People now will say, well, wait a minute. We remember how awesome it is and what it does and what, how great it is for the community. We'll be through this pandemic. And next year, you'll be 20 plus boats. And Rob and I will be really running there. Yep. Yeah. And this trophy here next year, come on out. Put together a group of your buddies, your friends, your, for your cause. And you can take home this beautiful trophy. Come on out. Dragon on the Lake 2022 next year. Bigger and better. And with that, the 2021 Dragon on the Lake Festival came to an end. Although it was hot, with temperatures pushing 90 degrees during the weekend, it looked like everyone involved had a great time. As we said earlier, Dragon on the Lake is the Orient Art Center's largest fundraiser of the year. If you have any questions or would like information on the Art Center's classes and exhibits, you can call 248-693-4986 or visit orientartcenter.org. As the school year gets underway, pre-kindergarten students will soon be entering the school district's newest building geared toward early learning. On Wednesday, August 25th, Lake Orion Community Schools Administration, board members, staff, and family members gathered at the entrance of the new Early Childhood Center to celebrate its official grand opening with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Are you ready? I have been dreaming about. It, is, it has been my passion in working in this field. And when I first came to Lake Orion, it's been now over 17 years that I've been here. And it's always been a dream of mine to bring this facility to this community.
This is a really important day. Early childhood is the formation of, of all child experiences and, and education. And to have such a state-of-the-art and, and wonderful facility, uh, second to none. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the difference in the years to come. The school district broke ground at the center in June of 2020, located on Jocelyn Road, just south of Clarkston Road. The facility can accommodate up to 230 students from birth to five years old, including general education and special education preschool students. So it is preschool, but it also is pre-K, which is even before preschool. So this is really going to be the child's first school experience in the Lake Orion Community School District before they get to kindergarten. So what types of things would a child experience here? Uh, anything from social emotional learning and education to gross motor, fine motor skills. We also have opportunities for kids to work together with their own families in our center and with uh, the adults that are teaching the programs. This project was made possible thanks to voters who approved a 160 million 10-year bond in November of 2018, which also allows the district to renovate other school buildings. I can say that I appreciate them and really am proud of this community for realizing that this is such an important piece of the educational process. Uh, early childhood is their first step, as I said before, of them coming to the school district and the community by voting in the bond uh, to create this facility is telling us this is important to them and their families here. So um, I, I, I'm over the moon thankful and I'm just so proud of that and being a part of this community. Quite simply, two words, thank you, all caps. Uh, absolutely amazing, uh, the work that's being done uh, and the work that's planned to be done. Uh, in a few years, the district will look completely refreshed. Uh, and this is just the first building that we're gonna open. Looking forward to Blanche Sims in a few years. Uh, and then all of the refreshes uh, that people are seeing as they drive by our beautiful facilities now. After Labor Day, the center will host an open house and orientation for families. Then the staff will gear up for the first day of school, which is scheduled for Monday, September 13th. The concept has been so popular that administration is already talking about the possible expansion of the program. For more information, contact the front office at 248-693-5439. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the cancellation of all official events related to the Woodward Dream Cruise. Car Buff celebrated the return of the cruise in 2021, and ONTV's Joe Johnson traveled to Ferndale for the official kickoff. The Woodward Dream Cruise started out as a fundraiser for a soccer field in Ferndale, Michigan in August of 1995. Organized by Nelson House and a group of volunteers, the event was expected to draw 25,000 or so participants. Instead, the Dream Cruise attracted over 250,000 people. Over the next few years, it grew into the world's largest one-day automotive event, drawing over 1.5 million people. An estimated 40,000 classic cars, hot rods, and muscle cars drive the 16-mile route that runs from Ferndale to Pontiac. After taking a hiatus in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Woodward Dream Cruise returned with gusto in 2021. Just want to let everybody know that this is the 26th annual Woodward Dream Cruise. And as part of the Woodward Dream Cruise, we are proud to let you know that this is the official ceremony to kickstart your weekend. On Friday, August 20th, dignitaries gathered on Nine Mile Road in Ferndale to officially launch this year's event. Board President Michael Larry welcomed those in attendance and introduced the mayor of Ferndale, Melanie Piana, who was elected to the position in November of 2019. I think every city is just happy to have their community events return because events really reflect what type of community you are. They bring people together, they bring businesses together, and they bring visitors to uh, you know, our downtown, which they may, may have never been here before. So the Dream Cruise is all about uh, experiencing what Ferndale has and all the other cities along the corridor that have events too. So this is a community spirit, regional event. We're just lucky that we are in a safe enough environment where we can bring back events. One, two, three! Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everybody! 
Following the ribbon cutting ceremony, the 2021 Woodward Dream Cruise was officially underway. Dozens of emergency vehicles that had been parked on Nine Mile Road during the day rolled out onto Woodward with lights and sirens blaring. On Saturday, Nine Mile was once again transformed into Mustang Alley thanks to the sponsorship of the Ford Motor Company. Approximately 1,000 Mustangs from all eras lined up east and west of Woodward Avenue. On the north end of the 16-mile stretch of Woodward, a brand new event was getting underway. The Woodward Dream Show at the M1 Concourse in Pontiac invited car buffs to show off their rides on the 87 acres that make up the grounds and circuit track. Ticket holders enjoyed food, drink, and entertainment, and were free to leave the grounds to cruise Woodward and return to the event. We took a look about a year ago, and uh, all of us being big fans of Woodward Avenue, we've all been out here for 25 years, and we kind of recognize some of the things that keep people away from Woodward, right? A little bit of the organized chaos out there, which is frankly part of the charm of Dream Cruise Weekend, but we also recognize that there's an opportunity to bring some organization to it, and elevate it to another level. So we're not meant to be an alternative to Dream Cruise, really an enhancement to it. Cars representing a wide variety of classes were displayed on the grounds, including a movie car class. Replicas of the Batmobile, Vacation Family Truckster, and the General Lee put smiles on the faces of visitors. This yellow automobile was created by Von Dutch for the 1969 film The Reavers, starring Steve McQueen. Arguably the most popular star car in attendance was the Monkey Mobile, one of two cars created by Dean Jeffries for the Monkey's TV series. The car was owned by legendary customizer George Barris for decades before getting auctioned off in 2008. It now resides in southeast Michigan as the jewel of Mel Guthrie's collection. This is an original. They made two for the show. This one was the first one created but the other one was shown first, so people call the other one number one. But this was really the first one built. So if you're on Woodward in this car, anyone that's written on Woodward, it's like mind boggling how many cameras are taking pictures of you and people giving you thumbs up or holding up tents. Just mind boggling. <laughs> Every year I'm blown away by it. And Pontiac. This is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. One week later, car buffs right here in Lake Orion continue to celebrate car culture with a charity car cruise that benefited a local worthy cause. On the morning of Saturday, August 28th, approximately 100 classic cars and hot rods gathered in Friendship Park for another Galling Buick GMC charity car cruise. Money was raised through food sales and donations from participants to benefit Miracle Field, a baseball diamond that literally levels the playing field for those with special needs. we got a pretty good crowd right now. I think we got to have about 100 cars, um, and we're hoping to have some more. And we have food out here and everything else, so everything's going to be donated back to Miracle Field. In what ways is money raised? Money raised this time is will be a 50-50 raffle. will also be a food and we are asking the uh, car guys to donate uh, a registration fee that goes directly to Miracle Field. Yeah, it's really a special day for us out here today. Um, first of all, thanks so much to Galling. Uh, they're amazing. Galling GMC in town is a supporter of pretty much everything that happens in our community. Uh, certainly Bill Kokanos, um, who volunteers hundreds if not thousands of hours for our community. So he kind of came up with this idea to, to bring the classic car crews out here bring awareness to our field. We have a really special game happening this after, this morning uh, in a little bit here with some of our Miracle Leaguers, so it's just a really awesome day. While the car cruise was going on, an exhibition game took place at the field between appropriately named the Mustangs and the Chargers. Miracle Field celebrated its grand opening just over two years ago in August of 2019 to give those with special needs a place to be competitive and have fun. Organizers are hoping to open their concession stand soon, which not only raise funds for the field, but also provide job opportunities. Oh, The Orient Area Chamber's first Women in Business Conference took place in 2019. Organizers had planned to make it an annual event, but of course, COVID-19 forced its cancellation in 2020. The event returned in 2021 and had a tremendous turnout. ONTV's Tessa Pinzine was there and brings us the story. 
On Tuesday, August 24th, dozens of women gathered on the grounds of the Orient Center for the second Women in Business Conference hosted by the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce. Attendees enjoyed lunch with an English garden party theme as they were treated to presentations by three speakers. We had planned to have this be an annual event. Our first took place in 2019, um, and we were planning to host this March 24th of 2020. We were set and ready to go, and um, approximately a week and a half before that happened, shutdown occurred. So um, we planned it for a few months later, hoping things would be better. They weren't. Um, so we got creative with how we planned this event. We are outdoors at the Orient Center under some large tents um, to accommodate, um, I don't know, fresh air, make sure that uh, people felt safe and comfortable in this environment. The first speaker was Rhonda Myers, CEO of Heartfelt Impressions Learning Centers, an educational program for young children. She told us what her message was to those in attendance. I've never been more aware of how difficult adversity can be than in the last year as a business owner. And although I've faced, like all of us, adversity throughout my life, something about this felt particularly challenging. And in my work with children, I've studied a lot about resiliency and children's ability to face difficult things and bounce back from them. Um, and I think Kids can teach us a lot, and so learning and sharing with them ways to really build that strength to bounce back from challenging situations and things that we can do, and particularly with women, things that have to do with caring for ourselves um, and uh, putting back in to the bucket that we take from to give to others. Holly Germati is an author and interior designer for Ethan Allen Global Incorporated. She encourages women to live a more simple, stylish, and happier life. Um, it was wonderful to connect with other women, um, to connect with other moms, and, and just share my story and, and experience a day to, to just be back. Um, I really wanted to, uh, to share my moment in my book. I did a book reading of how I discovered my purpose in life and really inspire women to to embrace their purpose and then kind of use that to, to get clear and focused on how they spend their time every day and how they live their everyday life. The final speaker was Alicia Huddleston, strategic business manager at General Motors. She encourages young women to pursue careers in engineering and science. I think an opportunity just to come and, and talk with people. I, I don't know if you heard, you know, my, my uh, presentation or not, but everyday people just like me to help everyone understand the impact that they can make in other people's lives. You know, I, I think it goes back to me personally and not really knowing anything about engineering and having just that one person plant the seed. And, you know, I hope that, and my life is awesome. So if I can be that one person to other people, then that's what I want to do. So it's really about making a difference and leading change, again, in other people's lives. The event was made possible thanks to the generosity of multiple sponsors, including the Michigan United Credit Union. For more information about Chamber of Commerce events, visit orientareachamber.com. Reporting for ONTV News, I'm Tessa Penzine. The high school football season is officially underway, almost two full weeks before the first day of school. Lake Orion hosted Utica Eisenhower at the Dragons home opener, and ONTV's Joe Johnson has all the exciting highlights. On the evening of Thursday, August 26th, the Lake Orion Dragons kicked off their 2021 season with a home opener against the visiting Utica Eisenhower Eagles. It was a scorcher with the temperature hitting 85 degrees at kickoff. The Dragons' first drive resulted in a punt, and the Eagles' first drive ended with a turnover on downs. The Dragons put together a nice drive, and facing a second and goal from the six-yard line, quarterback Kyler Carson pitches it out to Stephen Brown, who runs left, manages to stay in bounds, and lunges for the goal line for the score. The PAT was wide left, but the Dragons are on the scoreboard first, 6-0. The Eagles managed to put together a nice drive of their own during the ensuing possession. With 30 seconds left in the first, facing a second and goal from the five, quarterback Preston Crum floats one into the end zone where it's pulled down by Hayden Bills for the touchdown. The extra point was good and the Eagles take the lead 7-6.
in the second quarter. The Dragons put together another impressive drive, getting first down after first down on second and goal from the four. Nasir Lardell takes the handoff and plows his way into the end zone to cap the drive. Jacob Lee's extra point was good and the Dragons are back on top, 13-7. Following an Eisenhower punt, the Dragons once again march down the field. With the second quarter winding down, the Dragons are on the Eagles 13. Carson is in shotgun. He takes the snap and hits C.J. Witt, who is taken down at the one. The Dragons rush to the line, and Carson takes it in himself for the score. The PAT was good, and the Dragons extend their lead 20-7 over the Eagles to end the half. In the second half, the Dragons tacked on two field goals to increase their lead by 19 points. Then, with just over five minutes remaining in the game, on second and three on their own 27, Carson hands off to Billy Roberson, who finds a hole, evades tacklers, and goes the distance 73 yards into the end zone. The extra point was good, and the Dragons take a commanding lead, 33-7 over the Eagles, and that's how the game would end. The Dragons begin the 2021 season with a commanding win. We caught up with head coach John Blackstock after the game. We're going to smile that we won, right? Because these, these wins are way too hard to get to not enjoy. I've learned that over the 24 years that we need to enjoy them when we get them. But at the same time, you know, I think we saw a lot of things that we can still get better at. You know, some things to clean up, you know, a typical first game stuff, some, uh, some misalignments offensively. You know, some, some miscommunication things, and, and we'll get better at those. Like, like Coach Bell has always said, uh, how good can you get between week one and week two? The great teams make the big jump between one and two, and that's going to be our focus after we smile about this one for about 24 to 36 hours. Next up, the Dragons go on the road on September 3rd to take on the North Farmington Raiders, then face Southfield a and on the road before returning home on September 17th to take on crosstown rivals the Oxford Wildcats in a battle for the double-O trophy. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks again, Joe. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.